uh, I will begin with uh, Joseph Kuipers and uh, let's uh, let's read a little bit about him. Uh, as you can see, he lived uh, half of his life in, uh, in, uh, in the 19th century and the other half in the 20th century. So Josephus Theodorus Johannes uh, Kuipers was born on this day, June 10th, and that's the reason we talk about him today, but in 1861 and died in January 1949. Was a Dutch architect, primarily known for his Catholic churches. He was born to the architect Pierre Kuipers, quite famous himself, uh, and his wife Antoinette. His training began at his father's firm. Later, he studied at the Delft University of Technology, <clears throat> graduating in 1883 and becoming his father's assistant. The follow following year, he created his first work, a pension, a guest house, uh, and then his first design for a church, St. Uh, Urban's in uh, Nessan, I, I have troubles with the Dutch language, you read it, was completed in 1888. So he was a contemporary of, uh, of, of, of the great uh, quintessential uh, modern painter Vincent van Gogh. In 1893, he was commissioned to build the new cathedral of St. Bavo in Harlem, also in the Netherlands. The following year, he took over management of the family firm when his father retired. Uh, and in 1898, he was selected to design another major project, St. Mary's Cathedral in Yangon or Rangon. His initial design incorporated Asian elements, but this was rejected in favor of a traditional neo-Gothic style. This is very interesting. So, you know, at the end of the, uh, the 19th century, he proposed a cathedral which incorporated Asian elements. What does this say? That good architects are also non-conformists and, and, and they like to invent. And I think we should uh, do the same. From 1900 to 1908, he worked with uh, uh, Juan Jan Street, uh, Street at the uh, Catholic Oriented Architects Group under the influence of this group uh, the public taste gradually changed from neo-Gothic to neo-Romanesque. This is also very interesting because the Romanesque style or the Romanesque architecture preceded the Gothic. So it's, it, this is rather interesting that the public taste changed from the neo-Gothic to the neo-Romanesque, although time moved forward, not backwards. He was also a member of several other associations, including Architectura et Amicitia, an offshoot of the artist group Arti et Amicitia. Please, please, please also make associations, make groups, write manifestos, change the world. Occasionally, he acted as a judge for their competitions and served on committees, notably one delegated with helping to plan the museum, plan a park with three museums and the concert hall. For a brief time, he served as chairman of a Catholic trade union known as Hildebort. This was the man, I would say a handsome man, and his father was also a handsome man and an excellent architect, and so was his son. And actually the son of his son, I mean, the, the, his son, the, Joseph uh, Kuiper's son was also an architect, you know, uh, uh, a family of architects, just like in the case of the Berm family, we talked about yesterday. Gottfried Böhm being the, the son of uh, Dominicus Böhm and so on. Kuiper's first design, a house in neo-Renaissance style. So, you know, here we have a neo-Renaissance style, then we'll see neo-Gothic buildings, and then we'll see neo-Romanesque buildings. Again, moving backwards, but this is a very interesting house. Um, Although I don't like usually, you know, historicist architecture, but, uh, you know, when I compare this architecture with the um, white boxes that we are so uh, enamored of, I am not, I'm not uh, convinced that this is inferior. Uh, because there is a richness here that uh, is for all to see. Now, it's very possible. I'm, no, I'm not sure if he did also the, the, the top two floors. They seem to be very different for, from what is underneath. But if he did, 
all the more we have reasons to appreciate him. Let's look at the drawing. No, it seems kind of like this, but in reality, because of the even the colors and the materials used, the building looks uh, very different, as if it is an addition there, you know, on the on the top uh, two floors. I th I think it's an excellent building. Call it uh, neo Renaissance. Call it whatever you want. It's a good building. It's a rich building, and I wish such buildings would still be built. Uh, another uh, church, 1889-1891. Kuipersford Church is built in a mix of neo-Gothic and neo-Romanesque styles and has a big square tower uh, at the crossing, similar to much of his father's later work, notably the St. Augustinus, uh, the choir. Uh, the interior is one of the first examples of the use of brick in different colors. So in this building, uh, Joseph Kuipers, not his father, Pierre Kuipers, uh, used uh, brick of different colors, inspired probably by the churches uh, of Italy. Towards the outside is, uh, you know, uh, Rather austere building, uh, and uh, inside, as uh, we read, uh, you know, colored uh, colored bricks. Again, the need for color, the need for ornament, the need, in essence, for beauty. And here we see examples of uh, colored bricks. Uh, even if they are affected by the passage of time, I think one can still appreciate. Uh, their beauty, and yes, you can see clearly the you know the influence coming from from Italy. Not bad, Joseph Kuipers. Yes, the Dutch do have an incredible amount of uh, incredible uh, cathedrals and churches built, uh, you know, uh, historically over a long period of time. And I was myself uh, very surprised when I acquired some books about uh, the Netherlands and I discovered uh, an astonishing uh, architecture in brick. I, I, I knew that the Dutch have a lot of uh, uh, knowledge and affection for the brick. But I didn't expect to see so many cathedrals and churches built from the 19th century, maybe even earlier. Uh, this is a cathedral he built, uh, Joseph um, uh, Kuipers. And look at this, you know, I mean, it's, it's an impressive building. Uh, we might like minimalism, but I am sorry, minimalism is sterile most of the time in comparison with such an architecture. Here you can contemplate a lot of things, and details do matter. I, the, the, the spires are not uh, finished, as you can see, but they are impressive like this as well. But it was said that the cathedral is never finished. And so, you know, we are accustomed to... And, and But then, how could you finish your journey towards God? Because in, in essence, that's what a cathedral is. It's an infinite, infinite journey. But it's a huge building, and yes, I think uh, very impressive. Joseph Kuipers, bravo to him. And if you are interested in Joseph Kuipers, please do not uh, neglect also his father, Pierre Kuipers, who also built impressive buildings. Uh, we, we know of uh, Notre Dame in Paris. Okay, it's, it's a cathedral, but there are many other cathedrals, including in France, or especially in France, in my opinion, greater than uh, Notre Dame de Paris, like Chartres, or Beauvais, or Reims, or Amiens. But who would have expected in the Netherlands to see such cathedrals? And he is not the only one. I don't think that there could be architects who would dismiss this building. 
How could you dismiss it? It's it's cultural, it's varied, it's massive, it's, it has a lot of things to admire and contemplate. It doesn't matter if the picture is in colors or in black and white, it's still a very impressive building. And yes, this, uh, this uh, you know, intertwining of the Gothic or Neo-Gothic with the Romanesque or the Neo-Romanesque uh, is, is uh, enticing. And not to speak about the dome, the cupola there, which is, uh, you know, almost has some elements uh, coming from the Orient. And, 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 and they, now this makes us remember that he did make a proposal for a cathedral which tried to incorporate uh, uh, architectonic elements from Asia. And the interior is also astonishing. And look, an intervention of our time, that modern bridge at the top to unite the two towers, an interesting idea. I think, you know, here you could have some kind of a, a festival, architectonic festival, imagining various ways to, uh, to play with these two towers. You know, maybe every year to have a new uh, architectonic event, uh, commenting uh, creatively on, on the two towers. We remember that the Chartres Cathedral, one tower symbolized the sun and the other tower symbolized the moon. So it might be, you know, there are some suggestions there for a very creative interplay between uh, two towers. But even this is, uh, you know, a, a touch of uh, Russian constructivism where you wouldn't expect it. This is the beauty of the Netherlands. They are inventive, they embrace the new, but they also have a respect for the past. It's a very dynamic uh, uh, country and a very dynamic culture. Could we imagine something like this in our country to, you know, uh, bring in uh, Russian constructivism, uh, you know, in a, in a, in a building uh, destined for uh, religion? No way. Joseph Kuipers. I'm glad this building was not bombed in the Second World War as Rotterdam was. What is this? In Amsterdam, um, it's a, some kind of a bank, I think, yes. And uh, I don't like usually banks, but again, you know, architecture maybe shouldn't be too ideologized. Uh, and uh, you know, the, the coiffure of the building, the top of the building, matters a lot. In as much as uh, often matters for human beings, you know. He, uh, uh, I mean, I shouldn't talk about coiffure because I'm not blessed now with a lot of hair, but uh, those who do have a lot of hair, they know that it matters how, how you approach the sky, so to speak. I don't care too much about the building below the roof, but the roof has uh, touches of uh, architectonic sensitivity and inventiveness. But even here we see ornamental details which matter. Yes, they do matter. Look at the parapet. It's ornamental, it matters, it's rich. I think it is a bank or some kind, but would you imagine something like this done for a bank? Although it could be, you know, considered demagogical. How could you bring mythology uh, to the facade of a of a bank um, or an office building. Well, it is done in a way because, uh, you know, uh, uh, the New York Stock Exchange, for example, using Doric, uses Doric columns and is based on the classical, uh, you know, uh, architectonic paradigm. You would say it's a temple. Well, it's not. I mean, it's the temple of money and financial speculations. 
another church, 1900, 1903. And most architects, if they would just build one church like this, one building like this, they would feel accomplished. Look at this. It's an impressive building. Author, Joseph Kuipers. Uh, I'm sure he worked with other people, but still, he is the author. He is the architect who conceived this, in my opinion, a great, a great church. Uh, I like the fact that it is monolithic, is solid, is uh, one, but is also uh, um, a gathering of, uh, of many elements. So there is multiplicity in unity. And you see, there are several... Uh, uh, you know, uh, little spires uh, culminating with a central uh, big spire. I think it's very well done. Joseph Kuipers, the Netherlands, the land of the artists and architects. And, you know, paradoxically almost, the Netherlands is considered a very pragmatic country. And it actually is. But then how do you explain it? There is pragmatism, but there is also idealism. I mean, if we think just of, uh, you know, Vincent van Gogh, uh, Rembrandt, and then the modern movements, now Piet Mondrian, Theo van Dersburg, Gary Driedveld. Uh, I mean, they have a, an immense amount of, of, of accomplishments in the field of art and architecture. And even today, no? I mean, there is King uh, Rem Kolhas, and there is, uh, you know, the, the architectonic uh, empire of uh, nonconformists called MVRDV, and there are other architects and architectural firms. What is happening in the Netherlands? Maybe it helps to leave uh, one third of the country under the level of water, under the level of the sea, meaning to have troubles. But look what buildings they built. Or maybe I will say something outrageous now, but allow me to be subjective and even outrageous. I don't think this building is uh, inferior to the Parthenon. I don't. Uh, Louis Kahn was correct. The Hera temple in Pestum, which is prior, was built prior to the Parthenon, for Louis Kahn was more important but it's not so well known, although Goethe loved it, Winkelmann loved it, Piranesi loved it, and even made a series of 17 great etchings with a Pestum, with Hera's temple. And so there are other great buildings in the world, but we are stuck with a certain, uh, you know, uh, gods of architecture. And the Parthenon for Europeans is, uh, you know, is everything. The Acropolis in Athens. But what about the Acropolis in Chartres, uh, near Paris? It is an Acropolis there, but is uh, uh, on top of that Acropolis is the unbelievable uh, Chartres Cathedral. What is this? Another church, less impressive, a uh, little smaller, but, but it's still uh, a good building. And we see here the colored bricks that he employed in the earlier building. Um, I think that the idea to employ colored uh, bricks is, uh, is a good one and it could be used today uh, in our time as well. Both were, it was the inside, I mean, inside and outside. Uh, the outside is not very impressive, it's a little bit, uh, you know, common, so to speak, but we move forward. Another church, 1970, 1921. This one, uh, intriguing, you know, uh, almost, uh, you know, showing the way towards uh, Dominicus Böhm, the, the expressionist architect, the father of Gottfried Böhm in Germany.
Joseph Kuipers. He was an original architect, even if, you know, we read that he was using the so-called style of neo-Gothic, uh, the style of neo-Romanesque. Now he was a creative, inventive architect and even uh, allowing himself certain idiosyncrasies. This is, I think, the last slide of this rather short presentation on an excellent architect, Joseph Kuipers. He wrote this, Fascination is the key to quality. And I, 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 I suggest we have a short discussion about fascination and architecture. Uh, after I, um, uh, I say goodbye to uh, Mr. Um, Joseph Kuipers, now uh, not forgetting to wish him again, happy birthday. So thank you.